Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. My goal with this YouTube channel and now small business is to help encourage more people to get into combat robotics or robotics in general and make it easier than ever to do so. To that end, I recently developed and started selling custom designed products to make it easier to build a bot than ever before. This is the long overdue second video in a series of three videos highlighting my first three products. The basic PD board, all in one PD board, and the Just Cause PCB switch. Today, we'll focus on the all-in-one power distribution board. This is the product I'm most excited to share with you all, as I think it'll be a game changer for those who are less experienced with RC electronics, soldering, and wiring, and it can make your wiring more compact, lighter, and cleaner, even for experienced builders. Even if you already bought one, you may want to watch this whole video, as it will include a soldering tutorial and lots of helpful information on how to get the most out of my all-in-one board. Now you might be wondering, what is such a game changer about this board, and why will it make life easier for people? Well, that's simple. Every single robot requires a certain set of components. Every robot needs a battery, in this case a 3-cell 11.1 volt battery. In order to power your receiver, which every robot needs, in this case one that only operates at up to 6.5 volts, you will also need a receiver battery elimination circuit, or BEC, like this, which takes the battery voltage and limits it down to 5 volts, which is safe for the receiver. Um, you'll need some way of connecting those two together. You'll need some way of connecting the battery to this. And you'll also need some motors so your robot can move. Typically you'll see two or four drive motors. Each drive motor is then wired to a speed controller in some fashion. You can use bullet connectors like this, which make it possible to swap them. In this case I'm using a brushless drive motor, which is the same one that I use in my three pound bot division and you can also potentially directly solder the motor to the speed controller. Um, but you still need some way to get power to both of these speed controllers so that the motors will operate. Um, you'll also need a power switch of some kind because it's required for safety reasons to have a power cutoff, which needs to be in between the battery and everything else. And you'll probably also have a weapon, usually with maybe another even bigger speed controller that you need some way to connect to everything else. So how the hell do you actually connect all of these things together electrically? Well, one of these will do the trick. This basically replaces any wires or wiring squid that you would need to interface all of these components together. And it also replaces both a BEC and a switch because you can see the switch is actually built right into the board. It has the exact same screw style switch in my Just Cause PCB switch, which I'll make another video on later as is on my all-in-one PCB. Using my all-in-one PCB, all that you'll need to basically wire up your robot is XT30 connectors, which you can buy directly from my web store, and one of these uh, servo cable jumpers that you can also buy directly from my web store. So you just connect this cable in the correct orientation to your receiver in a channel that's not used by one of the speed controllers already. Connect your speed controller to the relevant channel, you connect the XT30 for powering that speed controller directly to the board. Repeat for all of your speed controllers. Make sure they're wired to their motors in however, whatever manner you see fit. Connect your battery directly to the board. Connect the receiver BEC connection to the BEC on the board through this three pin header, or you can wire it directly with these extra two pins or any other five volt device you need. And then you can simply use the switch key to turn it all on. You get a handy red indicator light on the board itself telling you that the board is powered, which might be hard to see under the camera's light. And you get the lights on all of your speed controllers if they have them telling you that those are getting powered as well. And if I had a radio connected to this receiver and a motor connected to this speed controller, I could then command the motor to do whatever I want, just like you would in a combat robot or other robotics project. So you've just purchased one of my AIO boards and you're wondering how the hell do I get this to work and do all the things I need it to do in my robot? Well, this video is going to show you. First thing that you need is to make sure you have a soldering iron and ideally some kind of a sponge, or I like to use these brass sponges, and some solder. And optionally, I would recommend that you have a heat shrink kit you can get these on Amazon. I'll have links for everything I'm talking about in the description. And a heat gun, or even a lighter or a match or something. 
And I would also definitely recommend that you get a good pair of wire strippers and cutters, or you can even get these fancy automatic wire strippers that I kind of like for stripping wires a lot of the time. It's just a lot faster and easier. And I have an anti-static mat here that if you were handling things that were likely to be damaged by electrostatic discharge, you can actually hook a wristband up to it, but I'm not doing that because these boards are not particularly sensitive to ESD. So first thing that you should do when you get one of these boards is solder around the press nut. This will just allow the electrical connection to be that much better. And it's super easy. It takes all of like 20 seconds. So it's super worth it. All you need to do is just get two things nice and hot and just start running a, a solder bead around the edge. And after it's hot, it should kind of wick underneath any gap that there might be in this nut. You don't need very much. And then you just kind of run the iron in a circle, dragging that solder bead around the edge of the press nut. And this will just solidify that physical and electrical connection and reduce the resistance in the joint between the nut and the board on the bottom making sure that you don't have any kind of excessive heat generated at the joint and don't have any unexpected failures during a fight. If you forget to do this step, it'll probably still work, but it won't have the full current handling capability that it would have if you do this. So that's really all there is to it. If you think that you want a little bit more, you can always put a bit more, it doesn't really hurt. It's just a little bit more weight. I mean, keep in mind this solder does have lead in it, so it's not the lightest thing in the world, but I mean, realistically, this is going to add like less than a gram to your robot. So that's really all there is to it. And now you can see there is a nice, this board's pretty hot now, but hopefully you can see there is a nice consistent solder bead around the nut. Okay, so now I'm gonna show how to actually solder the XT30s onto the board itself. So the way that I generally recommend doing this is you get your one male connector for the battery, and then you get your three female connectors for the weapon, drive one, and drive two. Now, the easiest way to do this, I find, is you pull off, whoops, you pull off your taller uh, male connector for the battery, and you basically just flip the whole thing upside down. And then once you get it sitting nice and flat, really all you need to do is turn on your iron. Now we simply take our solder and this is like the easiest process ever. You just get the board hot and feed it right in. It helps to do like a tiny bit on one side of each to start. And then you just hold the soldering iron there until it flows around and sticks to the bullet connection. Sometimes it works if you just get the bullet itself hot enough, then you stick the solder onto the bullet and it just kind of melts into it. And the important part is just making sure that solder is sticking to both the bullet connector and to the board itself. This is obviously much faster and easier than doing it on the uh, speed controllers, but that's still not very difficult. All right, so now this will be kind of hot, but boom, we've got three perfectly straight and soldered on XT30s. And now we just need to do the one remaining one. And again, just make sure you're paying attention to which direction the positive and negative go. The curvy side as indicated on the board is the negative and same for the connector. So all you have to do is match them and then you're good. And now we just do the same thing here. Super easy.
that's the entire process to set up one of these boards. Thanks for sticking around to the eight of you still watching. That's all you should need to know about the Just Cause All-in-One Power Distribution Board. I've launched a website, justcauserobotics.com, and I'm currently selling my boards exclusively on there, so follow the link in the description to buy one. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future products or tutorial video topics. If you liked this video, hit like. If you want to see more like this, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And of course, thanks for watching.